All right. Good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon. My name is Minister Errol Trench from Trench Altar Ministry. Again, it is so great just to be back with you one more time. It is so great just to be back with you one more time. To God be the glory. Each and every week, the Lord allow us to come to you and talk with you about something great about the kingdom of God. Each and every week, I am so honored that God allow us, gave us the opportunity to even have a conversation. I am so pleased. I am so happy. I am so grateful to God. And friends, wherever you are in the world, I just want to let you know that God is in charge. Wherever you are in the world, I want you to know that God is in charge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you are in the world, friends, I would like you to know that God is in charge. Isn't that nice? Sometimes we are in charge of things. Sometimes we are in charge. And when things are not going well, I haven't introduced my guest yet, but Pastor, when things are not going well, we don't want to be in charge. Sometimes things are not going well and we do not wish to be in charge because it's not going too well. When it's in going well, we want to be in charge. But when it's not going well, we don't want to be in charge. But isn't it nice that God will never pass anything off? He is in charge. He remain in charge. And he will continue to be in charge. To God be the glory. I am so honored to be here. Well, before I get any further, because I always get so excited, I do have a wonderful gentleman here with me. A minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. A minister of prayer. A minister who have walked the walk, talk the talk, when they come on to be biblical. I ah, shame, I don't shame. He have walked the walk, he have talked the talk. A man who is not ashamed of the gospel. And these days it is so nice when we can find someone who is not ashamed of the gospel. Today sometimes, oh Lord, there's so much to talk about, but I just want to introduce this wonderful man of God, this wonderful minister of God, this wonderful preacher of the gospel. And I would have to say teachers of the gospel because he, many times I've listened to him and he's teaching the gospel, the biblical manner, the biblical way, Behind me, there's a video that's been played of some of his teaching. And I would like to take this opportunity to introduce no other person than Pastor Dominic. Now, I don't like to put your name too much, but I would say Vitali. He might rectify that or clarify that later, but Pastor Dominic Vitali, who he's been a friend of mine for a long time. We have been in ministry for a long time. We have done many things together. But I'm so grateful to God that he has taken the opportunity to get into studio today to have a conversation with us, together, with you. Pastor Dominic is also the minister, the founding pastor, our partner pastor. His wife is also a minister. So I do not want to leave her out in the sense she's not here in studio with us today. Uh, Pastor Andrea, but I want to say that they are together partner in ministry to God be the glory and their minister he's the, the pastor of third heaven ministry of course is a minister who is in, in his own right is in, own, in his own studio time and time again so I'm honored that he leave his place to be here with us to talk with you may God ever bless you as you listen, Pastor Dominic, welcome. Thank you, Pastor Earl. It's great to be here with you today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless I'm you. I'm so glad you said about the gospel being essential because I feel it's not only essential, but it's uh, and not being ashamed of it, but it's the only truth and hope we have right now. Amen. It's the, the main thing the world needs to hear is Amen. the gospel. It's, it's the answer. Amen. 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 Praise God. Well, today we have a, a, a very hot topic, and what this topic is going to be today, it is about prior. 
And um, the topic that the Lord gave me is very clear in prior. And what it is, you may, some of you may, 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 may say, really? But the topic is regarding prior, but the title is All I Have is Prior. Some of you may say, all I got is prior. But the title, whether it's all I have or all I got, but all I have is prior. That is my title. That is the title that the Lord gave me. Now, when we spoke about all we have is prior, many times people may have been communicating with us over the years, Pastor, and they may have been talking with us, and the unfortunate is um, uh, the light could be a little bit bright for you, so let's see if that one is different. I want to make sure that I don't draw you with light. Okay. <laughs> okay. But when it comes on the prior, sometimes you will hear somebody said, um, I'll pray for you. I'm praying for you. Yes. Now, you've been involved in prior. You've been involved in, in hosting many prior ministry. You've been in, 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 in what they call prior line and everything. I would like you to pick up the pace and um, let's talk a little bit about prior. But do your introduction if it's possible so I don't step on your toes in any particular way. Sure. I'll just quickly say that there's prayer, you know, individual prayer, corporate prayer, uh, intercessory prayer. And so, um, you know, Third Heaven Ministries is the ministry we have in Milton, Ontario at the moment. Um, but we love to do prayer calls throughout the week because that is really the engine or the, the power behind any ministry is you need to have a prayer life and a corporate prayer for, for the ministry as a whole. But then there's also governmental prayer, prayer for our nation. There's so many different kinds of prayers so we can get into it if you like. Now, when you mention, so you mention, um, you mention, uh, corporate prior. Yes. Uh, oh wow, that's that's really. I'm gonna need you to elaborate on those. Sure, sure. You you have you mentioned um, individual prior. Yes. And um, what was the other one? Uh, intercessory prayer. Intercessory for prayer. our country or nation. For or the nation. Yeah. Okay. Or governmental. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So you want to take the first one and or uh, whichever way you want to go. Sure, sure. Because sure. this is really truly about prior. Yeah, sure. So you want to take the opportunity, and um, by the way, let me welcome you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here. It's a great honor and privilege. Thank you so much. You're doing amazing work. I, I love the studio and the setup, and uh, you can see this is a result of prayer, because you are a man of prayer. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So you can see that God is answering prayer. Uh, the, the first one, that Jesus taught individual prayer. Yes. Uh, when the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray, so we should actually be asking God to teach us how to pray. And we have what's called the Disciples Prayer, or what some people refer to as the Lord's Prayer, as a, as a sample yes. prayer. But that's uh, like going into our prayer closet and praying individually between you and God. Uh, the other type that I mentioned, the corporate prayer, that's when we come together as a body of Christ and praying collectively together. So that's what we like to do, whether it's an all-night prayer meeting or a Zoom call or any kind of uh, coming together in prayer. So we actually are um, encouraging one another and then you have like a prayer partner it says one shall chase a thousand, two shall chase ten thousand. So I feel when you're praying together in unity, that's another powerful uh, thing we need is you praying in unity um, in one accord. It, it just releases an even greater power in my opinion. So uh, I like to have my individual prayer life, which is important, but then we should also be coming together and having that corporate and or um, uh, a team prayer. <laughs> Let me call it that. that right. Yeah. Right. So, so uh, Pastor Dominic, in this time that we're living in, yes, we're living in a world right now. I mean, we're all living in the same world right now. Yes. Okay. And um, you know, um, we're all, if you don't mind, I use the word, we're all suffering the same situations. Yes. It's either lockdown, yeah. or uh, freedom for a little bit, yeah. then lockdown. Um, but then there are people out there that have said over and over that have completely lose the value of prayer. You want to elaborate a little bit about that for me? Sure. If anything, this is the time where we need prayer more than ever, not to be shying away from it or losing that. We need to go deeper because really prayer, let me start at the beginning, is communication with God. Correct. So you never want to lose your communication with God. Uh, Apostle Paul said, pray unceasingly mm -hmm. or without, you know, just always in being in prayer mode. So it's an attitude and a lifestyle. Yes. And um, so uh, so when you're communicating with God through prayer, yes. you're going to get the answers that you're, you need. Number one is 
strategies, solutions, how do I deal with what I'm going through in this time and season? Um, what is God saying? How do we establish His kingdom um, and move forward? So wisdom uh, comes through that intimacy. Prayer is really intimacy and fellowship with God. So when you're fellowshipping and communicate, uh, communion with God, uh, you're going to get spiritually stronger. So, so prayer will help you to develop your spiritual maturity and growth and help you be more effective in your own personal life, in your family life, and even in ministry as well. And so I feel it's so crucial and essential. You're actually, by the title today, you're reminding me that I have to get back to uh, putting prayer first is, is an, a, a very major, uh, um, I, I just sense an urgency. Let me put it that way. There's an urgency for more prayer. Um, and we can even have what's called a global, uh, what do you call it, like a national day of prayer. <laughs> Really, the country has to return to prayer and return to God. Amen. So, as you know, you've been around for quite a while, Pastor Dominic, and I've, I remember many years ago, I don't even know if we knew each other as well then, but you were hosting um, a, a, a prior night. That's right. On television. Yes. You were hosting it um, um, at very late night, I believe you were on maybe at least about maybe 12 o'clock or... One o'clock? Two in the morning. Two in the morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, uh, who was it? Uh, you, you, we heard this story about many, many midnight prior. Yes. You know what I mean? Midnight prior. Yeah. And I, I want to get back to that midnight prior situation. But for you to be praying two o'clock in, uh, in the morning, you were answering the call of many people yes. at two o'clock in the morning need prior. That's right. Now, Talk to us a little bit about that because you talk to us a little bit. What was it like then? Mm -hmm. Which nothing changed today, That's but right. what was it like then dealing with some of those calling priors at, at two o'clock in the morning? Sure. Number one, we have to realize we're living in a spiritual world and uh, it's a 24 by 7, it never ends. So we need 24 by 7 prayer actually. So what I loved about that program called Nightlight Live, which was on uh, CTS 100 Huntley Street in Burlington, we would actually go to the uh, studio Friday night, sometimes Saturday night at 2 in the morning until 4.30. It was a two and a half hour online uh, broadcast. And I would have a guest similar to what you're doing here. And, uh, but we would actually take in calls over the phone because people are watching at that time of night. That means there's needs in their community all around the clock especially at night because you know who else are you going to call after midnight to get prayer and thank god that was really a night light for people that you know were going through uh, addiction or different types of challenges in their life so they would call in and we pray individual prayers for them lead them in salvation that's why the gospel you mentioned is really the key people need to start you know accept jesus number one how can you have a prayer life if you don't take that first step Amen. accepting jesus as your personal lord and savior and then you can start communicating to god the father through the son by the power of the holy spirit uh, but i can elaborate a lot more but uh, i think that's just an overview right there. no but that's that's interesting though because you you made a point um who will you call at two o'clock in the morning that's right okay and um god he knows that a lot of people sometimes at that time in the night Either trouble hits you, yep. life, um, it could be a, a widow, or it could be a, a widower, mm -hmm. or it could be somebody uh, which loneliness mm -hmm. can hit them at a certain time, and like you just said, who are you going to call right. at midnight? One of the things that I remember, that I heard, when um, you speak about that, I remember some years ago in corporate, there was a discussion about people and um about friends yes and that discussion about friends was um well there's a lot of friends that we call in social media as friends yes but really and truly they are not the friends that you call at 2 a.m in the morning That's do you? Right. <laughs> no. you you see so let's so let's make sure we understand this word called friends and who can we call and at 2 a.m so most of the people that we know as friends are considered, in, in this world that we live in today, there's a lot of social media arena. Mm -hmm. But th that friend or those friends are not the one that you could call on at 2 a.m. in the morning. Yes. But, but the Bible, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. The Bible 
said that Jesus Christ is ever at your beck and call. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is at your beck and call. You know, let me, let me say this again. Sometimes even friends that you do have that they are friends, you cannot call them at 2 a.m. in the morning. Wow. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm billing this pertaining to your conversation. Yes. I want to make sure that I stay exactly. Sure. At 2 a.m. in the morning, yes. you cannot call some people who are truly your friends. Wow. It, it, is that correct? But God's available 24-7. But God is available 24-7. Yeah. Do you right. follow where I'm coming from, friends? So, the truth of the matter, um, I, I was listening to an article, and i got to put this in. It was, a, And I'm going to let you speak, Pastor Dominic. When I was listening to an article, and... The statement was made that there's an individual, I think it was a preacher who was speaking, and the preacher said, somebody said, preacher or bishop, I will be with you as la I will I will I will be with you, I will support you or, or back you as long as you're right. <laughs> and the bishop said, to be honest with you, I know you're you you I know you mean well. But I don't want you to back me when I'm right. When I'm right, I don't need you. I need you when I'm wrong and my back is against the wall. <laughs> you, you follow where I'm coming from? Yes, yes. yes. So, so, so the funny thing is, there are people who will back us as long as we are right. But when our back is against the wall and maybe we are wrong, then they vanish. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. wrong or right, the Holy Spirit will be with us. Amen. Let's elaborate a little bit because I'm really interested in that word when you talk about that midnight thing. Something's coming to me. I'm just going to share this quick revelation Please. if it's okay. Is it uh, like, for example, the prophetic ministry is something that people really have a desire for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes I, I, I almost wish like the, the prophetic voices would tell people, return to God in prayer because that's what we really need. That is the true solution. And, and can I just read please, Second, please. Second Chronicles 7.14? Because I feel that's the pattern that King Solomon, one of the wisest men of the Old Testament, gives us this uh, formula for prayer. He says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, so humility is one key right there, and pray, number two, and seek my face. So there has to be a hunger and a thirst to seek after God. And then finally, turn from their wicked ways. So there's a repentance and a confession of sin also incorporated in when you're going to approach God and communicate with Him. Then I will uh, hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. So those are three promises that God will do once we do our part in prayer. So God wants to hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. And we all need our sin forgiven, and we all need our land healed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is why we need major prayer intercession at this time. But uh, that was just coming to me is the importance of prayer. And, and these are like kind of some formula in which you are incorporated in the prayers. Yes. So, Pastor Dominic, um, today, even before I am, um, even though this is um, a beautiful event and a beautiful program we're having, yes, I would not take the chance. I still went to my altar yes. to pray. That's right. I have altar at the studio. I have altar at home. I have altar everywhere, but I still went. By the leading of the Holy Spirit to go and pray about this. Praise God. That's you follow where I'm coming from. Yes. And it was it was uh, uh, so powerful to be at the altar praying to God because even though you're coming, mm -hmm. and even though the Lord gave me a word, mm -hmm. I still gotta go and ask Him mm -hmm. to do something about. It. Yes. So there are people that are listening mm -hmm. that. They are between, well, why do I need to pray? I've been praying all my life. And so far, so far. Yes. You've been the part of prior line. You've been the part of listening to people. Depression at 2 a.m. in the morning on national television. So I need you now, pretend that this was a 2 a.m. in the morning and you were talking to somebody and somebody calling and whatever it might be, it's a depression. Talk to them. Praise God. Yes. God needs to be your source and focus for all things. So today, as we just, uh, uh, we're gonna, ha I'm gonna pray right now. I feel is, I want to give you a sample. Father, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, for whoever today is is dealing with any type of depression in their life. Father God, 
Let him come to you in humility, Father God, and call upon your name, Lord God. When you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you shall be saved. But not only that, God wants to heal you. God, God, God is our healer. He is our great physician. And he can lift every heavy burden off you, for his burden is light and his yoke is easy. And he just wants you to feel his shalom peace, his truth, his anointing, the anointing which breaks every yoke, and the love of God. I feel like a river of love is just flowing out of heaven right now. Wow, thank you, Lord. Release it through that camera and fill your people to overflowing, Lord. Power, love, and a sound mind we speak forth to your people, Lord God, and that we declare that by your stripes they are truly healed and made whole. Thank you for the blood of Jesus, for the cleansing and purification and remission of all sin today, Lord God. We just ask you to command your angels to take charge over them as well, Lord God, and put a hedge of protection and camp all around them today, Father, in Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen and amen. Praise amen. God. It is about prayer. So this whole segment is going to be about prayer. Exactly. So might as well we lead people into prayer. That's right. Now, Jesus knew that prayer was important. Yes. Because the Bible said that when Jesus, after when he baptized, mm -hmm. he's the son of God, first of all. Yes. We're talking about the son of God. As a matter of fact, pastor, I was listening to one of your broadcasts. Yes. And you were actually speaking. Oh my God, you were actually speaking about when the devil mm -hmm. was thrown out of heaven. Yes. And I would love if you could remember any of that. I think you did this recording about four years ago. Yeah, a while. Yeah. Okay? Um, I, I would love you to... to um, you spoke so eloquently about the devil was thrown out of heaven. Let's just touch that now because I felt it in my spirit. Sure. And of course, he set up his kingdom. Yes. So there are a lot of misconception. Yes. There's a lot of mis. There's, in other words, the devil also set up his kingdom. Kingdom. Yeah. 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 And we're unfortunately are are coming are, are confusing. Sure. People. Sure. You want to elaborate on that? Sure. One? one of the reasons why we call their ministry Third Heaven Ministries based on Apostle Paul's vision of Second um, Corinthians. Corinthians chapter 12, I believe 2 to 4, uh, he, he was caught up to a place where God dwells. God dwells in what's called the highest heaven, also referred to as the third heaven in scripture, and there's perfect obedience in heaven. The angels only do what is uh, in obedience to God. Their holiness, righteousness, there's love, joy, peace. So in God's kingdom, everything functions in perfect unity, harmony, but when Lucifer, who was an angel in heaven, rebelled against God, instantly he was cast out. Mm -hmm. And he took down one third of the angels with him. Yes, Why? Yes. Because you cannot rebel against the Creator and expect God to. Uh, uh, God, God is a holy, righteous God, so he will judge everything. Uh, the way he the way he needs to anyway as a result of that is why we have sin in the world and why there's a battle going on between the third heaven and the angels so I, I wanna I want to really really pause for a second okay sure and I want you to to pick it up because again like I said let's be honest a lot of people are confused okay do you understand me a lot of people are wandering around on earth and they're confused Okay. Now, I want you to go back, roll the tape back again, sure. and let's start over. Sure. And how did a lot of this happen? Please pick it up from what happened with Lucifer. Okay, but just quickly, to, this is why spiritual warfare is so important today, and it's part of another type of prayer we do, is because in heaven there was perfect unity, perfect peace at the beginning, but Lucifer, who is like a, a cherub or a, a, an archangel, similar to Michael, when he chose to be him, he wanted to be worshipped himself Correct. instead of bringing the worship to God. Correct. So because of that pride, envy, jealousy, and, and rebellion, whatever it was that, 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 that caused him to want to go against what I call the, um, the principles of heaven. God has a kingdom, and he's the king. And everything in heaven has to go according to God's way principles. Uh, so when he was cast out, I'm not going to get into the teachings of, 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 of why he was, but when he cast out, he had already deceived one third of the angels in heaven, and they all fell out with him. So in other words, when you speak of they all, I, I feel so need this need to, to bring this part. So when you, he already recruited. Yes. Yeah. So Lucifer already recruited. Yes. Um, of an angel who took side with him. 
Yeah, he deceived them, basically. Right. I, I don't think any of the angels would purposely want to be cast out of heaven. Of course not. So they were deceived. Mm -hmm. And so deception is a terrible thing because they didn't know what they were doing. It, But when God judges, it was so instantaneous. I, I feel that was one of uh, uh, <laughs> the most dramatic things that happened in heaven and before you know, he got, you know, uh, we know the rest of the story. We don't know what happened in Genesis one one. Amen. And from but uh, God gives us hints throughout Scripture of yes. what exactly happened. Yeah. Now, as you were speaking, that you mentioned, and I, I, I feel the need to tell, to to speak about this because it is about prayer, but it is about the danger beyond the, behind who you're following. Right. Do you follow me? Yes. I I felt that because if we're going to talk about prayer, might as well somebody know that you could, you can be following the wrong teaching. Right. So that's a great point. I'm going to, uh, can I elaborate Please. on that? Is it not all prayer is good prayer? Uh, you have to pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, 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 and Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. So this is why I'm, I'm telling people you have to have a personal, intimate relationship with our Creator and Savior. You don't want to be just praying to anybody or any spirits because there are other spirits mm. in the spirit realm. So these angels that fell out of heaven, mm. they established kingdoms on the earth, mm. including false religions and many things that are all in this world we're living in. Mm. A lot of the world is in deception right now. Correct. So we need prayer to break through that deception. And Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Right. So part of the spiritual warfare is, number one, is, is breaking through this uh, what we call the second heaven where these fallen angels are operating from called powers and principalities mm -hmm. but we have access directly to God in the third heaven Amen. and we can get wisdom from him on how to operate in this world because we're in what's called the first heaven really the sky above us or the physical realm is the first heaven then we have the second and third anyway I don't want to go too deep oh no this is this is amazing this is amazing and the reason why because I personally believe if we're going to be talking to people about prior right and I'm feeling it in my spirit. If we're going to be talking about prayer, we don't want to lead people in the wrong direction right. about prayer. Exactly. We've got to give them the right instruction. Yes. Because uh, they said, uh, forgive me for using the word, a drunk man hold on to anything. <laughs> okay. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. So we want to make sure that you understand that you spoke a while ago about the, um, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the, the, the God of Isaac. Yes. Um, the, the, the enemy... Uh, just to let you know, there are people who said that I don't believe in anything. Right. Now, can you not believe in anything? Because if you don't believe in anything, something take over. Right. <laughs> Am I? Is this? Yeah, it's either one side or the other. So you're gonna you're gonna fall on one side or the other. <laughs> right. So so. <laughs> oh my get on, God. Get on the right side. <laughs> so so the thing is, folks and friends, you may not. You may have said I'm not a believer of Christ. Well, if you're not a believer of Christ, that means you do not have to pray to God. Then the enemy will uh, possess that whether you pray to him or not, you are now on his side. Mm -hmm. And that's how it came to me yes, a while ago. Exactly. Okay? So we're, we're talking about all I got, all I have is prior. All I have is prior. Um... This is a big topic. Can I, can I share one more thing Please. on this? Like Psalm 91 is a powerful prayer for divine protection. Because what we just described, there's angels that fell out of heaven, but there's two-thirds of the angels still in heaven. So there's spiritual warfare going on, and we can see it all throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So how can we, as what are called Christian soldiers, <laughs> uh, fight a battle unless you have your weapons ready? And prayer is your number one weapon for divine protection but also for divine empowerment because we can trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. How do we do that? Through the word of God and through prayer. Mm -hmm. Those are our two main weapons, the scripture and prayer. Wow. Yeah. Uh, preacher, this is such an awesome topic. Here's another thing that just came to me. And friends and family, I want you to hear me well. Um, you might call a family friend and say to them, tomorrow morning I have nothing to eat. Now, I'm not trying to make it sound like prior will fully stomach. That's not what I'm talking about. You can call a family friend and say, look, I need some money. Listen carefully what, I'm, what just came into my spirit. And I know maybe some of you may re reject this. Now, every channel of money movement can shut down. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Every channel of money movement can shut down. Just even for 10 seconds or maybe a day. 
So it will delay everything. But do you know what can never be shut down? Prior. Praise God. Yeah. <coughs> Heaven cannot go on lockdown. Oh God. Come on. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I just want to hear someone say that. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. Come on, come on, preacher. Let's start. Where is the first best Wi Fi cell phone connection? Money hit in Shabano City. Come on. I'm getting so excited here. Crazy Lord. Hallelujah. Heaven cannot go on lockdown. That's right. Seven by 24 by 7. Hallelujah. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Oh Lord, come on, help me up, preacher. Whatever the world, whatever our, uh, whatever the world tells us, somehow, at this moment in time, we kind of have to just lug along with it. Is it that true or not? Well, we're in the kingdom of God, so really, it's a it's a different. This is what I'm. That's what I was trying to say. This is what I was trying to get at. Exactly, preacher, you're reading. You're reading. <laughs> so what I'm saying, preacher, I want to sit, but I can't. I know, yeah. Oh <laughs> my God. So what I'm saying, the 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 economy, based on situations, doesn't matter what they they say today, it is a good excuse. It is a good excuse for them to say, oh, this can't happen, or that can't happen, or slow. But you will never get a call from heaven. As a matter of fact, oh my God, help me, I'm preaching. Prayer, prayer changes things. And, and if you want your life to transform today, I don't know, I'm, I know we're speaking to a lot of people. You have an amazing yes. audience. God bless them all. But I feel your life can be totally transformed if you change your prayer life as of tonight. Amen. Praise God, hallelujah. More prayer, more power. Amen. <laughs> Actually, there's this saying, little prayer, little prayer. I'm sorry, no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. More prayer, more power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Increase your prayer life and you're going to, you can achieve all things. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> listen, listen, preacher, preacher, preacher. This is such a powerful, it's such a powerful segment. Praise God. I, I, actually, I actually pull up some things about prayer. I pulled up some stuff. And Psalms 1, Psalms 4, 1, prior. And everybody knows that's David. Praise God. So, preacher, I'm not sure how good you can, how fast you can find those for me. Sure, Here. I'm ready. Are, are you good? good? All right, go for that. <laughs> for, um, Psalms 1, yes. Psalms 4, 1. Go ahead, please. Hear me when I call, O God, O my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Preacher, man, get ready for Psalms 32 6. 32 6. This is beautiful. Psalms 32 6. Praise God. It says, For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Sorry to bother you, preacher. Psalms 66 19. The, folks, this is about prior. All I have, my our title is All I Have is Prior. And while the preacher is looking for this, you may call me at 1 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock, which you're probably going to say, uh, Minister Errol is asleep, Pastor Dominic is asleep, and then you're going to say, well, I will call him at 8 in the morning. But by 8 in the morning, you can call and God between <laughs> that time to that time and everything. All I got is, is prior. Amen to God be the glory. Preacher, you found it? Psalm 66, 19. Yes. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Amen. But preacher, man, I hate to bother you with Psalm 69, 13. Oh, Lord. This is about prayer, friends. And God has sent something to you about prayer. He don't know anything about all these verses, so please forgive me. But as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. Now, before we go any further, Psalms is all about David. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly, yeah. <laughs> Mostly about David. Yes. And to David and God, what was the relationship? He was a man after God's own heart. A man God's after God's heart. own heart. Thank you. Jesus. We're talking to somebody today. David was a man after God's own heart. And we heard many things about David. Let's make sure you remember that he was a little um, one who was anointed by God to replace Saul. Yes. Okay, that little shepherd boy. Yes. But this, later on, this is not the little shepherd boy situation. Mm -hmm. 
This is a king yes. who is the leader of this great Israel. Praise God. <laughs> am, I, am I on track? Yeah, very anointed man. Uh, <laughs> king of uh, Israel. Very anointed yes. king of Israel who happened to be. You, you, earlier you wrote, you, 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 you read about Solomon. Yes. I think Solomon. that was your first reading. Yes, yes. Which is the father of King Solomon. Who, son, son of King. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, the father yes. of King Solomon. Yes. yes oh my yes. God. This is <laughs> unbelievable. So let's make sure you understand these things that you're listening about prior. Sometimes, preacher, yes. people want to let it seem. Do you remember your first verse that you read about Solomon? Second Chronicles 7, 14. Yes. Could, could you find it again for me? Yes, I'll tell you by memory. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and number four, turn from their evil, wicked ways. So that's our part. And then God will hear from heaven, forgive our sin, and heal our land. My God, we need that today more than ever. Listen, God will not bring you a stupid topic. <laughs> to God be the glory. Now listen what came into my spirit. You will think it's only weak people pray. Mm -hmm. strong ones pray. You will say that again. Oh, the strong ones pray. <laughs> you will think it's only weak people pray. Solomon, in the Bible, who was he considered? Uh, well, the king, king of Israel. Yeah. Uh, folks, am I <laughs> am I knocking on anybody's door? Am I knocking on anybody's door? I just got another word here. Since I, this is a whole other sermon, I think you're going to preach it. I pray not because I'm weak, but because I'm strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the revelation's just coming. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. How foolish. How foolish that some people say it's only weak people that pray. And what you have been reading for the past, I don't want to feel taller than you, preacher, but it's very difficult for me to, for me to, it's very difficult for me to sit. You know what I mean? But, what I'm saying, we were reading a while ago about David. Yes. And David, in the Bible said, was like after God's own heart. heart. Who happened to be the son of King Solomon. The father, father of King, King Solomon. Solomon. Yes, got it. Yeah. Who Solomon was the wisest Wise. man, as the Bible said, That's right. of our time. Yes. So, it seems to me that Solomon was not a weak man. And it seems like King David was not a weak man. That's right. And yet, these are the... What did King David, what did King Solomon say? Go back to school, quote that again. If my people who are called by my name, so these are God's people, will humble themselves and pray, seek his face, and turn from earth evil ways. Then, then God will hear from heaven, uh, forgive our sin, and heal our land. No. Healing today. You may not have to listen to me you may not have to listen to me who is this schmuck but is is it make sense to listen to what king solomon is saying yes. preacher yes. uh lord i know you got some stuff going can i elaborate just a little bit more since you brought up the psalms and king david all the psalms were birthed out of prayer and worship when you think about it king david had a 24 by 7 uh a house of prayer, I guess you can call it, or what we call the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And he had hired musicians to worship continually, nonstop. So a lot of the prophetic revelation for the Psalms came through that time of worship and prayer. And this is why I don't feel we should um, separate those two. They're integral parts of each other. So when we're communicating with God in prayer, worship is automatic. Like you're already ready to break out in worship because that's they go together. You can't separate them. So I just felt that revelation had to come forth is don't make prayer something separate. It's part of our worship. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Oh my God. Oh, I, I know you kept looking down and yes. I don't want to pull you away. <laughs> I, I know I, I, this is so charged up. I'm yeah, so charged yeah, yeah. up. So I want you to, 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 to we're going to go back to some of the, the reading, but I want you to go stay on what you want to, oh my God, this is, this is awesome. Well, we have what's called the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, where they, when they ask Jesus, teach us how to pray, Jesus taught them. Um, the, the, the uh, model prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I love that because it's all about the kingdom of God and establishing his kingdom. It talks about forgiveness, and it, which is very important. And, and he also to keep us from all evil. Why would Jesus teach, teach us to pray, deliver us from evil? 
because he knows there's evil out there and we need God's divine protection uh, to heal us, deliver us, and save us. And that's why earlier I mentioned Psalm 91 is a powerful uh, psalm for divine protection. But then also um, the true Lord's Prayer, in my opinion, is John 17. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus taught the disciples how to pray. Correct. But then when Jesus himself prayed, he, he's sinless and perfect. He's the Lamb of God who takes away all the sins of the world. So when he prayed to the Father in John 17, my God, that's at a whole new level. And that's when Jesus showed true prayer intercession. He was standing in the gap for Hallelujah. Us. Hallelujah. So he was interceding even when he was still on earth. In his last year of ministry, he uh, 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 interceded for the disciples, for us, and he prayed to the Father in heaven to uh, deliver us from all evil, protect us from all evil, and keep us. But then finally, in Hebrews, Jesus is called our holy high priest. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 4. So what is Jesus doing today? He's at the right hand of the Father in heaven. There's intercession going, and we have to join in with the angels, not only in worship, but in intercession. Or sorry, join with Jesus Christ, our holy high priest, mm -hmm. in intercession. So... It would take time to read the prayer of John 17 or Hebrews 4, but I, I just feel those are very important. Um, yeah, it's John 17, 9. As a matter of fact, I got it right here. Oh, wow. That's John 17, 9. So why don't we read it? Because it's, it's right here. John 17, 9. Yes, please. John 17, 9. Jesus or says, do whatever you want to do there. Yeah. I just want to make sure. That's good. It says, I pray for them. So Jesus was praying for his disciples. He says, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Mm -hmm. Wow. All and all mine are thine, and, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. So Jesus came to save those who are going to humble themselves. That was the main prayer King Solomon said. Meekness and humility. Those are the ones who will inherit the whole earth, Jesus said. So we need to humble ourselves, and when you are repentant, a heart of repentant, then Jesus is, then you can obtain salvation and protection and come into God's kingdom. So in the, in the kingdom of God, it's peace, joy, righteousness, and the Holy Ghost. So that's the place you want to be. And part of it is you enter in through prayer and relationship. Prayer is about relationship with God, which is really about why we needed to be born again to begin with. Wow. Is how can we re reconcile with our Heavenly Father except through prayer. Wow. Amen. Wow. Uh, preacher, I, I know we kind of, this is, this is absolutely amazing. Let's go down to, if you can, for sure. me, Job 22, 27. Job 22, 27. To God be the glory. Praise Woo! God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> to God 22. be the glory. Job 22, 27. My God. My God. My God. It says, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Now, Job, you want to take the, the opportunity and just elaborate very fast to the listeners, just a, a, a candid moment, who Job was. Yeah, Job was a, a wealthy man, actually, in the East, uh, way back, again, we're not sure the exact timing, but probably around the time of Abraham or, in, you know, in the time of the patriarchs. And uh, he was very wealthy. He had many children. I think it was 10. We have to look at the beginning. Here. No problem, no problem. Yeah, he, um, and he was considered a righteous man, which means... Um, you know, he was in proper fellowship with God. Beautiful. So, now, folks, one of the things that the Lord allowed me to be putting in your spirit today, um, based on what Pastor Dominic just mentioned, and I wanna, I'm trying to connect with you prior versus who prayed. Mm. I'm trying to do a connection between okay. prior yes. and who prayed. Okay. Okay? So, he just gave that information about who Job, you, you just gave the information who Job were. A righteous man. A righteous man, very wealthy man. Yeah. Okay, very righteous in the eyes of God. Yes. Okay, and to be righteous in the eyes of God is not chicken feet. <laughs> okay, okay? Um, but yet, hallelujah, but yet Job, could you go back to Job 22, 27 for me? Yes, 22, 27. Yeah. He's a great Bible scholar, by the way. <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> you know, you can toss the verses on him anytime. Go ahead. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. So this is a now a very wealthy man speaking. And he shall hear thee. Okay. So again, I'm trying to make sure that folks you are lined up with understand it's not just weak people who pray. That's right. Yeah. Okay? Everybody. everybody prays. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. The head of state, the head of government. As a matter of fact, let me just stop there for a second. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, the more our government pray, the better situation will be. Yes. 
Can I share one more thing Please. on that? Because I feel that's one of the lacking things right now is that, I mean, years ago I was on what's called the Queen's Park Prayer Intercessory Team. So I would go right down to Bay and Bloor, downtown Toronto, where the premier is. And, and uh, we would pray right inside the Queen's Park building. And then we even had what was called a prayer breakfast for all the politicians there. I don't even know if that's still happening these days, but that just shows you that the further our company, our, our country drifts away from prayer, mm -hmm. more challenges because okay. prayer is what is the solution. So you, 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 you get this. Yeah. So now that's amazing, by the way, because it's only obvious that I'm, I'm, folks, I'm trying to connect with you, and I know there's a lot of. <laughs> I know there's a lot of powerful people that listen to Trench Altar Ministry. I know many of you by name, by communication, by collaboration. I know. And I'm, I'm trying to, many of you are wrestling between, well, my money is okay. As long as my money is doing well, I'm okay. Folks, I can't tell you how prior um. In, in God's stock exchange. Yeah. Oh Lord, I'm getting these things. Revelation. And God's stock exchange. Your prior beat every currency exchange. Amen. Oh Amen. man. Praise God. Praise God. So can I share Please. another from a revelation there? There was once a, um, a story of a, a wealthy man who was very successful in business. And um, again, this is just a story where it says, when he got to heaven and, and God said, well done, my good and faithful servant. But then God said something to him, if you had only done it my way, you would have even been much more successful. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, he was shocked at that because he thought he had re received a certain level of success. But in prayer, God will give you divine strategies in favor, which is beyond the natural. So you can have supernatural power on your business, on your ministry, on your life, whatever it is, if we really go to God in prayer. By the way, just in case you're wondering, folks, um, here... Uh, Pastor Dominic, could you knock for me? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so just in case you hear us communicate, we're looking at each other, but there's a, there's a glass between us, okay? Just to let you know. So, <laughs> if I knock at you, open it and I could talk. Okay, I just feel like say that because I know many, some of you may say, oh my God, here, so, but no, we have a, we have a, a glass in front, bet, between us. Um, uh, Pastor Dominic, yes. again, I, I cannot lose the value yes. of what people may think that it's only weak people pray mm. and and here everything today is about it's not weak people pray folks i gotta tell you if you're praying it's not because you're weak as a matter of fact as a matter of fact mm. Oh, another revelation is coming. Oh, my Lord, goodness, Lord. it's just popping like popcorn. <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord, Can I share Lord, one more? Please, please. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed where the, the beads of sweat were like blood flowing down from his forehead. And what he was doing in that prayer intercession, he finally said, not my will, but yours be done when mm -hmm. he was talking to the Father. So prayer is not about trying to get God to do our will, but it's about surrendering our will to God's mm -hmm. will. And then you'll have true success when we are able to get to that level. Actually, that's so funny because I, I was speaking about Jesus praying yes. earlier. Um, now, Jesus is the Son of God. Yeah. And you kind of want to think if Jesus can pray mm -hmm. or do pray mm -hmm. when he was on earth, yeah. please tell me the reason yeah. human should not pray. Exactly. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that you understand your prior... Oh, preacher. It's your it's your language. It's your communication. I mean, we need it. It's your... it just imagine for a moment that Jesus Christ, up and being baptized, went on the mountain. The Bible said that he went on the mountain. Now, I'm not sure if I should say this, whether he went to be tempted by the devil, but he went to pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. So either way, we learned that when he, after his baptism, he went on the mountain and he was tempted mm -hmm. by the devil. But we also went, Jesus didn't just went to sit down. Jesus Christ, he, he is the word, yeah. but he knows the word. Yeah. Uh, preacher, this is, the, Jesus <laughs> is the word. He knows the word, but he used the word. Yeah, exactly. So imagine you here on earth. One of my broadcasts I mentioned, if the devil could tempt Jesus, 
who happened to be the son of God, then who are you for him not to tempt you? Who are you for him not to trick you? Who are you? If Pastor Dominic started by saying heaven, Lucifer fell with a bunch of deceived angels. If that's what you mentioned. Yes. So the enemy have set up his own kingdom, mm -hmm. his own area. Because if he had dominate, wanted domination in heaven, mm -hmm. he ain't gonna come on earth and just say, "Call it quit, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> if, the, if, the, if, the, if Lucifer wanted control in heaven, and he's on earth, do you think he's just gonna say, "Oh well"? Mm -hmm. No. He's going to use the very same tactics that he had in heaven, but he's going to use it more as a rebellion spirit. And the unfortunate, that same rebellious spirit, I'm feeling to tell somebody, he have turned it over to you. So that rebellious spirit that, you, that the devil has, Lucifer had against God, the enemy also turned over rebellious spirit to some of you watching. I feel led oh, to pray for Lord. them. Is that okay? Please. Pray, praise God. Because I feel that uh, please, please, please. prayer goes together with fasting. Please. And it's a spiritual discipline. So just the same way an athlete goes to the gym and works out every day, you have to develop that spiritual discipline. Mm. But I just feel led to pray for uh, some healing because I love healing prayers. Is please, that okay? Please. Father, I thank you, Lord, for everyone watching today, Lord God. Your word says that perfect love casts out all fear, Lord God. So we come in humility before your mighty throne of grace, Father God, and I repent, Lord God, and hopefully everyone's collectively repenting of all sin, all transgression, and all iniquity, which removes every legal access, right, Father God, and uh, allows for forgiveness to take place. So Father, I pray that as people confess their sin and, and repent and turn from our evil, wicked ways, we will hear that you will hear from heaven, forgive us our sin, cleanse and wash your people today, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, deliver us from all rebellion, Lord God, and anything that is not of you, Lord God. For your word says that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, Father. We also repent and renounce of any witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and anything that comes from the kingdom of, uh, of darkness or the occult. We, we, it, we break it down, Father, today by the power of your spirit, by the anointing of your spirit, and we release your healing virtues, healing power, and anointing to bring total healing health to your people from the crown of their head to the soles of your feet. By his stripes you are healed and made whole. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. My God, God. I, I, I'm telling you, preacher man, this is, a, the more that I'm, 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 we're talking about this, the more, you know, things coming to me. Exactly, yeah. You know, and, 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 and what, what's coming to me here, and preacher just, just uh, um, prayed about that, is what's coming to me is that this rebellion yes. situation. Yeah. And there's a lot of people whom they are completely rebelling against God. Which is not a good place to be. Which is not a good place to be. Because when the judgment comes, you're going to be judged. And we don't want anyone to be cast into the lake of right. fire. So we want to repent now and get over onto the place where you can be at peace, peace with God. So let's let's give the the innocent rebellion yeah. right, right. A, an opportunity okay. to understand. Yes. Your rebellionness may be from the very spirit that God threw out of heaven. That's right. Hello? Yep. <laughs> that very that's what came in my spirit now to tell you. So your rebellion may not necessarily be a f your own free will. Right. But it is been commanded. Hello? Yeah. It's been commanded. And the bottom line, you might be rebellion against God. Rebellion, rebellious, rebellion or rebellious? Either one. Uh, you, you may be rebellion or rebellious against God. You may be rebellion or rebellious against preachers. You may be rebellion or rebellious against uh, apostles or, or anyone, Christian, anybody to do with the gospel. You may be rebellious or rebellion against the Holy Bible. No, truth, truth, you don't know why. You really don't know why you just know that you are rebellion. Yeah. And, and, and here's the funny thing. Every now and then you might feel that mm, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. And then, but you know, you could do that and every now and then you feel guilty about rebellion and then feel not so guilty and then feel guilty. So the devil, Lucifer, 
who himself, who God thrown out of heaven with a host, and I think he said a third of heaven. One third of the angels, yeah. One third of the angel trying to in, trying to recruit you on his side. Yeah. Because that's the only thing that the, the devil can do. That's the only thing Lucifer can do is to recruit you. And the thing that Lucifer can do is to let you rebel. The worst thing he could ever do is rebel against God. You can rebel against you, man. Bad and not so bad. But rebel against God, it's, oh my God, that's death. Yeah. And this, these are not just emotions that people are feeling, but we're made up of spirit, soul, and body. Right? Mm -hmm. So I tell a lot of times when people are feeling anger, rebellion, or all these emotions, really they need deliverance sometimes from the spirit because mm -hmm. rebellion is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Same as anger can be a spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and so we, God wants to keep you and deliver you from that evil and fill you with his peace, love, joy, so you can have all the good emotions, the good feelings that God wants you to have. But if you're not experiencing that, you're probably in the flesh or in the world. Those are two other things we're battling. It's not just the enemy, but... We're living in a, a carnal world, in a, in a fallen world, so we need to be delivered out of that and come into the kingdom of God to truly find true peace. So one more time, I'm going to ask you to breathe a word of prayer. And I know you read, read, you read, you, you prayed about it already, but now I'm going to let you yes. pray about that maybe a spirit of rebellion yes. against God. Please sure. praise God, Father. I thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. If anyone just says, "I confess of the sin of rebellion." then it gives God permission because God won't force himself on you, but he will forgive you. He will cleanse you and protect you if you ask. And so, Father, we come in humility today and we confess that sin of rebellion and witchcraft, Lord God, and we renounce it. I bind the spirit right now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, for he said, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We loose the healing in the lives of your people today. We loose the angels of heaven, Father God, the angelic hosts, ministering angels, healing angels, Father God. And we declare that by your stripes, your people are healed and made whole. And I thank you for complete deliverance today, Father God, and even salvation for everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I feel like telling somebody while Pastor Dominic was praying that, yes, it is said in the Bible that you will hear the word, well done, good and faithful servant. It will be said in the Bible. But um, but then you're going to also hear in the Bible, depart from me, I know you're not. Yeah. But I got to tell somebody, please, oh God, yeah. I got to tell somebody that in the midst of this word, yes, depart from me, I know you not. You probably will also hear that word, welcome. Mm. Uh, preacher, yeah. Somebody, listen to me. It is said that there is some that God going to say, Well done, good and faithful servant. The, um, well, um, enter in my, uh, I forget how that verse is, go. Mm. You know what I mean? But then there are those that God is going to say, are, you know, depart from me, I know you're not. Mm. Now, that word depart from me, I know you're not, they're still going to be in the midst of depart from me. I know you not. To those, they're going to be those others who are welcoming those that were told. Mm. Now, that is damnation. Mm. Because that's Lucifer welcoming you home. Wow. Oh, yeah. Olama. Hakama no sheteme no so. Sekimu shama. Imagine God say to you, our Jesus Christ said to you, Depart from me, I know you not. And Lucifer said, Don't worry, welcome. I have prepared a place for you. Jesus, my friends, what we are saying today may seem is just like loose words. It may seem like just nonsense. But at the end of the day, do you want Lucifer to welcome you home? Just to let you know, it's not, yeah, I, I would say it's not really welcoming you home because he's going to burn in the Well, of course, yeah. but, he, but he's <laughs> but bringing you with him. It's a, yes, you're right. You're he's right. bringing yes. you with him. Yeah. See, Pastor Dominic, just make sure that he clarified that and we're on the same page. So when I said, yes, the Bible said Lucifer is going to be, you know, eternal hell, but he's bringing you with him. So the truth of the matter, you and I want to live uh, and, and by the way, again, I repeat myself. It's not your intention. Mm -hmm. That's the worst part about it. And, and preacher just prayed about it. It's not your intention to live this terrible way. 
But you, as Pastor Dominic just prayed, you might, oh, Pastor Dominic, jump into what you want. I, I, I feel we're going to pray against deception because, like you said, once the scales fall off the eyes, like Apostle Paul, he was going around persecuting Christians and he thought he was doing something good for God. So he was totally deceived. And that's what a religious spirit does as well. It's a lying spirit. So you have to be born again of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth. And, uh, and so he will free you from any lying deception because you don't want to be surprised on the day of judgment that God would say that to you. You want to know that you have a personal relationship with your Heavenly Father today. And I believe many of your uh, viewers are here for that reason and purpose. They're already you know, uh, um, sons and daughters of God. But God also wants to strengthen you and to spread. We have a lot of listeners who we, I know that they are listeners, yes. but they are not yet in the kingdom. Okay. I know that for Praise sure. God. So we're welcoming you into the kingdom. Oh today. my God. Hallelujah. That you're, this is your entrance way into the kingdom of God. Today. By the, by the way, God. let me just say this, and, and preacher, going to touch it. Yes, many of you, God bring you back week after week. Yes, many of you, you have even come in to me and struggling between is this right or this is not wrong. I mean, I've, I've listened to great comment and I've listened to comment. What amazing me is that you came back again. Yeah. That you, even though you're fighting the gospel, you're still able, you still come back to challenge me. I'm talking to a lot of people that just because I always say half of my group preachers, another half is people who are Christians, another when I said half, you know, quote, so it's divided. My listeners are divided between a lot of ministries or ministers around the world, a lot of Christians around the world, but I also know that this thing, based on how God set it up, a lot of people are getting this material who has nothing to do with the Bible. But they get it anyhow, and many of them, some weeks, fight it. Mm. But God let them get it anyhow. Many of them you know, said, well, here you come telling me about this God again, or Jesus Christ. So it's only obvious that God allowed you to be getting it, yes. but you still could be fighting against two opinions. Yeah, yeah. Please continue what you were so saying. So God is reaching out in grace and mercy, because God wants everyone to enter His kingdom, which is an everlasting kingdom of love, joy, peace, and all the goodness of God is in His kingdom. So you have to make a choice and decision, because God will not force Himself against anyone's free will. So you have to not only say yes to Jesus, but you have to renounce the evil of this world. Sin is what keeps you away from God's kingdom. You have to say, God, I repent, and I turn away from that. So again, um, we're going to pray, Father, Please. that all the any deception will fall off. Lord God, what we bind or be can cast on any spirit of lies and deception today, Lord, and we release the spirit of truth in full force and full measure today, Lord. More fire, more power, more anointing, Lord God, to break through, Lord God, and help people usher them all in today. Everyone who says yes to their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today will be ushered into the heavenly realm. Thank you, Lord God, and experience eternity with you, Lord God, but also shalom, peace, and health, wealth, and prosperity. It's all part of God's promise. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. So I thank you, Lord God, that they will start to experience the abundance of the kingdom of God. And I give you all the praise, the glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. There's just one more thing. Please go right ahead because I, I, you take it over from here. Okay. Because I just, we're at the top of the hour, but I want to make sure that you voice your opinion there, please. Sure. Jude chapter 120 is a powerful verse because sometimes we're praying in, in our human language, English language, or whatever language you speak, but then sometimes we pray in the spirit. Yes. That's our spiritual prayer language. Um, Sometimes people use the word tongues, but there's different types of tongues. You can be talking in tongues in a different language, or you can be praying in the Spirit. So this is what I want to say. Praying in the Spirit edifies ourselves. We don't need to interpret it. We just need to pray in the Spirit like you sometimes hear us do, because that's me listening to God and hearing from God. So Jude uh, chapter 1, verse 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, or in some versions it says the Holy Ghost. So we need to learn to pray in the Spirit. And then it says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So I just feel like praying for one more minute Please, in the Spirit. I, yes. and, and for those that want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, just be ready to receive. You can lift up your hands or say, I'm ready, Father. I release, Father, the power of the Holy Spirit upon your people, Lord. I ask you to command your angels to take charge over them now, Lord God. I say, breathe on your people this day, Father God, and 
baptize them afresh, new power, new anointing, Lord God, and take them to a new level, Father God, and 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 make them spiritual, yes, warriors in the kingdom. Lord Hallelujah. God. Prayer warriors, we need more, Father God. Raise up an army, Lord God, of people that will be bold and courageous to go forth, Lord God, and establish your kingdom on this earth as it is in heaven. I pray that you activate the gifts of the spirit within them, Lord God, that there be an impartation today of the gift. Of, of, of speaking in tongues, interpretation, Lord, gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, Lord, and especially gifts of healing, discernment, and, and working of miracles, Lord God. All the gifts, let them come alive, Lord, Hallelujah. and people go forth and, and transformed in a new power Hallelujah. and anointing for your prayer, for, uh, praise, uh, for your honor and glory, Lord, in Jesus' mighty holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, I don't want to say we came to the end, but I want to say that we can only go so much. Yes. Um, hallelujah. What a powerful topic. All I have is prior. What a powerful topic. Pastor Dominique, you're looking down. So if there's something else you oh, want to say, go ahead and say it. I, I, I think we covered a lot. But I know in the book of Acts, when they gathered together in corporate prayer, they shook the, they shook the temple, my goodness, and the house. So I feel we're going to have more shaking as we go into the prayer. Praise oh, Lord. Oh, and Lord. I know you're a man of prayer, so you're going to really uh, help oh, lead people in the right direction. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. It's going to... Thank you, Lord. Father, you. Friends, in my spirit, I feel it was an anointing time. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I felt God had led us the way he wanted us to go. I felt it in my bones. But as I went to the altar to, do the, to the pray, I felt it in my spirit. The altar was lit to God be the glory. The altar was lit with the almighty power. And boy, what happened here is unbelievable. I hope, I, I believe if one individual, one, the Bible said that God left 99, leave 99, and went to look for one. And if, if, if this message today have allowed one individual from turn around, then this was a job well done. By the Holy Spirit, not by us. Pastor Dominique, I cannot say thank you enough. Thank you. I appreciate it. My God, uh, this, this, this is, this, this is a lot of food. Yes. Good food. Yes. And I pray to God that somebody have accepted these what we you heard today use it as a, a measuring tape use this message today that you heard as a measuring tape for your life Amen. use this message to see where you are use this message to see if you have been deceived use this message to see if the enemy have tricked you in any way in taking part or taking side with him I ask you dig deep into what you heard today go on your knees and ask God God where do I stand in this all I have is prior go on your knees and say God where do I stand I don't want to I don't want to make it I don't want to know I'm on the devil's side but I'm not aware of it because you can be on the devil's side but not aware of it and Pastor Dominic spoke about being deceived the enemy was thrown out of heaven Lucifer was thrown out of heaven not because he was doing nothing was because he had a rebellious spirit and could be rebellious yet he was created by God Lucifer was, was created by God but when I when I heard Pastor Dominic spoke in one of his message, he was he was the, one of the most adorable angel, but he got corrupted. That's right. And got evil got into him. Yes. And that wonderful angel that God that God have created, he was tossed up, but not alone. But the funny thing about the the devil, as Pastor Dominic, you spoke about it. To make a mockery of among kings. The devil was make a mockery. By God. God showed the devil he has no power. The devil has no power. 
So even though the devil has seemed to have power over you, it's because you allow. You're not in the kingdom yet. And yes, you know, that can happen back and forth, but it's we rush back to God. That's right. We rush back to God. That's the solution. We rush back to God. Again, Pastor Dominic mentioned in one of his, as I was watching some of his stuff, the devil allowed us to ask Job, God permission to touch Job. That's right. That's right. So that meant the devil has don't have total control. No, God has. God have all the control. God have the last say. So, being you are God's people, you are the only one can turn God away. You are the only one can turn God away. The devil can't make you turn God away unless you want to turn God away. There's a place in the Bible that said, resist the devil and he will flee. And Jesus himself told us when he prayed on the mountain after his baptism, he said, when the devil kept tempting Jesus, tempting Jesus, tempting Jesus, Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So folks, I'm, I'm talking to you that he didn't quit tempting. He's still tempting today. Just that he's not tempting Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But he's tempting the people who have a chance to make it in heaven. And I'm, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I trust that these words will do something for you. I know Pastor pray already, but I'm going to ask him just to click, please pray the final prayer. This is Trench Altar Ministry. My name is Minister Earl Trench. You've been listening to Pastor Dominic Fratelli. Uh, Fratelli. My apology if I say that wrong. Um, um, but I want to make sure that you know we are not the center of attraction here. Jesus Christ of Nazareth is. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise and this is, a, this is a God moment. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I trust that this will help you. I trust that this will help, Pastor, help somebody here. As Pastor now, pray the final prayer and we're out of here. God Praise bless you. God. Thank you, Father. I pray for your shalom. Peace, Lord God. As many people have said yes to Jesus Christ today in his plan of eternal salvation for your people, Lord. I welcome all of the new believers, Father, all your new your children back home, Lord God, into the kingdom of God where they belong, Lord God. It's their covenant right to receive your peace, your joy, your love, Father God, and even all the abundance that's part of your kingdom today, Lord God. So I pray, Father God, for healing in relationships is what I'm sensing, Father God. You're, you're restoring and reconciling relationships, not only with your heavenly Father, but among families, among children, among spouses. Father, I pray just that healing power and virtue flow today, Lord God, and let people have a complete renewal of their mind and think differently this week, Lord God, because of your love flowing through your mind, body, soul, and spirit this day, Lord God. We give you all the glory and honor. Abba, Father, in Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. And that did say this was going to be our last word. May God ever bless you. May God ever keep you. Until next time, my name is Minister Errol Trench and Pastor Dominic Vitale. All right. God bless you. You have been listening to Trench Altar Ministry, a circumstances changer. To God be the glory. Find us on social media anywhere that you wish. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.